All right. Uh, if we could, uh, so this is the, what is this? This is the April Board of Directors meeting. Uh, we'll get started here with a call to order and roll call. We'll move through new business, old business, and then we'll uh, kind of open topics and discussion and move into a closing. Um, bear with me as we kind of kind of reformulate the agenda a little bit. Um, so Perry, if you could call us to order and roll call, please. All right. <laughs> Joe Plunk. I'm here. Joe Lowenthal. Here. John Reiners. I am here. Ann Fleek. Yes. Here. Jim Martin. Present. Scott. Here. here. We have a guest, Steve. All right. So we know that Mike's not going to be here. Um, do you know if Mary Jean is planning on being here? She was not going to be able to make it. She had a, okay. an after school activity. All right. Excellent. Well, there is a quorum. Thank you, Perry. Appreciate that. Um, so I sent the, we'll start off with kind of a, um, Bear with me a little bit, and I'll, I'll, I welcome feedback on the agenda. We're trying to evolve the the meeting format a little bit from what was the past couple of months ago into a little bit more of a flowing format that's a little more conducive to getting business done. Uh, so it may tweak a little bit over the next few meetings, so just bear with it, and uh, I, I welcome feedback and suggestions. But with that, I do want to take just a minute and say thank you, everyone, and I apologize for my uh, four-legged friends in the background. I do want to thank everybody for your commitment wow. and dedication to the club and all that you do for the club. It is appreciated, um, and it is uh, well-received, and I'm thankful for it. So uh, with that, we do have open positions. Uh, I do want to take a minute and ask uh, and, and put on the floor – um, I'd like to appoint Dan Fleck, AA4DF, um, as our club call trustee. Um, so that technically, because that is because that is an open position, if my understanding is correct, that is an appointment, but the board does have to approve that appointment. <laughs> so, board for the rest of the business. Um, if the board would approve the appointment of Dan Fleck, AA4DF, as our club call trustee. I so move. We accept Dan Fleck, AA4DF, alias N9DPNA. I, uh, I second. I, I'd, I'd like to mention that I think it's Fleek. Yes. Fleek. <laughs> Sorry. Did I misspell that? The, the typo yeah. there, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I was going let me to see you. if I can fix that real quick. I was yeah, going to let you vote in. How far we could take this, didn't you? Yeah, I was going to let you vote in that Dan Fleck guy and then go. <laughs> me. <laughs> and so okay. guy with an old call at 9 PNA. Yep. All right. Okay. Fixed. Sorry about that, Dan. <laughs> Typos. That's what you get for working on us uh, on an agenda without the proper amount of caffeine. Anyway, there is a proper motion and second on the floor. Uh, is there uh, all in favor? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The motion carries. Welcome to the board of directors, Dan. Yep. Thank welcome, Dan. Much. Anything we can do to help, we will. Uh, count reason, on it. Um, and I, I do want to just a, a full kind of a preface here for just a minute. I had a couple of conversations with Dan for you to go out and kind of visit the repeater um, and just kind of show him around. I preface all of this by saying that we don't expect Dan to be the person that is doing all of this work or the expert to do all of this work. We're actually, I personally am counting on him to not be the expert, but to be the person that goes and gets all of the right people and all the experts to gather around him for the benefit of the club and to the, the teaching of the club benefit uh, all of the things that he has to do as our club call trustee. 
you know, you know, the club call trustee is just that a trustee for our call. They're uh, take care of our repeaters and other activities. So uh, Dan was very uh, appreciative and, and I'm fully supportive of that. Dan is not our expert, but Dan is the guy. He's going to go get the people. Uh, so with that, I'll give Dan, if you have anything you want to add real quick, we'll circle back around to you later on. Well, I just want it to be a learning experience for others in the club and myself. So I mean, look forward to it. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Um, I did want to preface this. I am going to do my very best and out of respect for everybody's time to knock this meeting out as uh, within between 60 and 90 minutes. Uh, that is my goal. Uh, I may ask the favor of everybody. We may, because I do feel that we're just a little bit behind. We may have to have a quick meeting uh, somewhere in the middle of all of this to try to knock out a few little dangly issues around field day or other things that are popping up uh, just to try to get make up a little bit of time that we normally would have had if we just kind of hadn't set everything down, gave everybody a couple of three weeks pause to just kind of uh, recover. So with that, um, what I'd like to do next is I'd like to review the minutes of our past board meetings. Um, if there are any uh, discussion or approval of those or edits to those, let's talk through those and then let's get those past board meeting minutes approved. So with that, I'll yield the floor to our Secretary Perry. All right, you got me on the spot. So let me uh, get this stuff ready to go for you here. While he's doing that in the minutes, I guess when when was the transition between vice president to the president? Uh, the night of March 12th. That's my Was it automatic or you were just standing in for the president until some other time that according it, to according to my understanding of the bylaws, Joe, it was uh, automatic. OK. That's my understanding. Now, I, I open it up to the board to have a conversation about that. I do know that the board affirmed it and the membership affirmed it, but uh, uh, we can certainly talk about that for just a minute if we need to. Oh, no, that's fine. Getting ready. Okay. That was my understanding. It was automatic. All right. If I could share the screen, Joe, I think we're there. You go. Ready to go. Oops. You should be able to steal the presentation. All right. Oops. All right, can everybody see that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So just real quick, Joe, was that your understanding as well? You, you, I assume you'd ask that for a particular reason. Uh, Joe, I had a quick question for you. Well, okay. Is that your understanding? Was or I just wanted to make sure that your your question had gotten answered or your concern was addressed? Yeah, it was addressed. Okay. All right, Perry. All right, we'll begin. I think I've done so many minutes here. I can't really even. Remember my own name <laughs> half the time, but uh, I believe we'll be. I can, I can appreciate that. With the meeting, uh, with the minutes of the regular membership meeting on March 12th. Yeah, the membership typically approves the membership meeting minutes, if I remember correctly, correct? I think they, I think they do both. Okay. That's published in Sparks. Would you just want to go yeah, ahead? Just so that we don't have to sit there and read them. All right. You want to go straight to the board of directors then? Yes, sir. All right. 
Uh, I, Perry had done uh, had sent the minutes out. Did anybody have a chance to? Did anybody not have a chance to read through them? I All right. So I noticed I uh, Perry I didn't check it for completeness. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't see anything. I'm going to make it put out. I just going to make a quick note here. These are the minutes of the actual March 12th meeting that we had previously convened and talked through and approved. Um, I noticed that the time has been edited in and inserted here. That was the one thing that we thought would, would need to insert right. the time stamps are in, in place. Right. right. Uh, so these minutes have technically been approved. What we would need to do is just to have a quick motion to uh, edit the minutes as we see here and then reapprove them. The only thing I saw was when uh, Dan uh, FBJ made a comment about the the cost of of a new trustee. I made the comment it would be thirty five dollars. That was in the membership meeting minutes, so we could go back to those. We can circle back to those in just a second, Joe. Okay. Uh, this is the board of directors meeting. Oh, board uh, um, of directors, the, okay. Um, so what I uh, the uh, I would entertain a motion to edit and uh, edit the minutes and then reapprove. I mean, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, edit the current document with for the minutes for the board of directors meeting on March twelfth to include the. Uh, the times stated for when we convened and when we ended the the um, session. Right. And a second. Second. All right. Uh, proper motion and second. Any uh, all in favor? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So these uh. Perry, thank you for doing that. Those are approved as written there. Now, to Joe's point, if Joe wants to bring to us real quick the membership meeting minutes that you had open just a moment ago, he wanted to edit and have a uh, an adjustment to, I don't know exactly where it was. Dan, right here, Dan Werner. He was, the expenses for changing the, trustee and I made a comment or made a statement that it would be $35. So and let's just as insert a second sentence there, Perry, after the first sentence there and just saying, uh, Joe Lowenthal, WA4OVO stated that the FCC fee is currently $35. Sounds good. Something along those lines. Oh, it's a PDF. Oops. All right, so we'll have that adjustment made. Cool. Thank you, Perry. Uh-huh. So this was the called meeting on March 17th. These are the minutes of where we kind of wrapped up and tidied up some loose ends and talked through uh, a few things. Um, Go ahead, Perry. So I don't know if anyone looked at this and found any errors. Or I did not find anything as far as problems. I remember. Um, Is there any more additional? Is that the end? Oh, there we go. All right. All right. I don't see anything uh, substantially in error there. I don't, have, I don't have any additions or corrections to those minutes. 
Uh, does anyone have any adjustments or edits or discussion around the minutes as presented by Perry? That looks good to me. No, nope. looks good. Yep. I right. would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. All right. Is there a second? I'll second that. Or, or I think Scott put his hand up first. Fair enough. Uh, well, proper motion is second. Uh, any opposed? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Perry. We'll circle back around. Do you have anything else? Uh, hang on one second. Let me flip over here to check uh, where we were. Uh, Dan, we need to know how dog that is. Say again? I was going to ask Dan what kind of dog that is on his on his lap. Chihuahua. <laughs> it's my buddy. A Chihuahua. Princess. All right, Perry. Sorry about that. All right. Oh, we, no had worries. 10, we had 10 new and renewal uh, applications for membership come in during the last month. Uh, all of these were for individuals. And we had four new and six renewal. Um, I would recommend that we... Um, approve all these applications so move or second all right we've got a motion and a second on the floor to approve our membership new member applications as well as our renewal applications um, all in favor please say aye 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 aye, aye. all opposed motion carries all right thank you all right, Jim, you're up next. Uh, well, before we move on, uh, do we want to mention uh, the donation that we received with one of the renewals? Or is, is um, it, you can certainly, uh, yeah, we can certainly mention that as a function of your report. Makes a good time, good time for that. Okay. Was that just as uh, a who actually received that? Just as a quick question. We see the the check. It was in the, the PO the, box. It was in PO box. Yes, and it was okay. received with the with the application renewal. Same check. Um, was was it? Uh, were there any conditions to it other than just a donation to the club? No, it, it was just okay. on the, indicated as a donation. So the, okay. Are you, are you asking like you know if, if the person wanted to remain anonymous? No, I mean, or did, I mean, they could have designated it. Hey, we designate this for food and beverages, or we designate this for new membership scholarships, or bus scholarship, or for uh, PR. They are or something either. coming up for bus. <laughs> What's that? I said I have something coming up to use it for bus, Huntsville bus trip. Well, I mean, that's what I was getting at. Is the donation was just that it was a general fund donation, uh, being that it, the the person that made the donation did not specifically. Um, designate that their donation had to go to something specific. So being that they didn't specifically ask for us to designate it for something uniquely specific, then we have the ability or flexibility as a club board of directors to use that donation at our discretion, whether that's for a club uh, event or the bus term or whatever it may be needed. It's this discretion of the club to be able to use the funds at that point. That, that's all I was trying to clarify. So that's why I was asking those questions, James. You, know, let, let, you, let say me, James, you say James on the Zoom, and I forget. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on, no worries. But while, uh, yeah, we needed to talk about this email that we got, and why, uh, and that was uh, Perry had sent that out. So, okay. thank you, Perry, for uh, reminding of this. Sure. Um, we had one item. Sorry, I apologize. We had one item of correspondence this month that was from Tom Butis and. He was writing us on behalf of the Neshoba Amateur Radio Club. Tom is a member. His call is KM4AEM. He addressed it to Joe and I, and the letter is as follows.
Good evening, Joe and Perry. I'm contacting you on behalf of the Neshoba Amateur Radio Club. As I'm sure you are aware, we have a club in the Germantown area. Many of our members are also members of Delta and other surrounding clubs. NARC, as you may be aware, does not have a repeater of their own, nor does the area need another one. We do participate in field day and other area events with the other clubs. However, we do not have much of a presence in the Memphis ham radio community and would like to get more operators in the Germantown and Collierville area interested. I proposed last month at the NARC meeting to seek approval from Delta and their repeater trustee for permission to conduct a monthly net for our members and all ham operators in the Memphis and surrounding area. We propose using the Germantown 146.625 repeater with a monthly net beginning on the fourth Monday in June or July at 8.30 p.m. I will be out of town in May. According to ham calen the ham calendar website, that looks like a good night and it's two weeks after our monthly meeting. Using this repeater would also give stations a chance to test using Echo Link as well. I would be the contact for this net at the beginning and main net controller. Credit will be given to Delta Club for use of the repeater at net closing. We look forward to, I guess, your review of our request. You can reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns. Sign Tom Butis, uh, KM4AEM. And I believe Joe um, Lowenthal may have had a follow up. Um, well, the only thing I said was that. Uh... Uh, the Soda County is at 8.30 on Monday nights, but that's every Monday night. But I don't have a problem with it. Uh, as long uh, as they yield during severe weather, but that's just me speaking for the National Weather Service in the Aries, and I'm sure that won't be a problem. <laughs> that's I think that's okay. uh, a unit. Yep. Go ahead, sir. I think that's unanimous that we just that they're uh, uh, implicit in this as a request to yield at any time that we would ask. I was going to say that Je uh, Tom is uh, a fellow net control for Delta Delta Net. He calls the um, first and fifth Tuesdays um, uh, for Delta Club for us when uh, we're in our board meeting. We, he and I swapped, so I got three and four, and he gets one and five. Uh, so he's very familiar with running net controls. Oh yeah, um, is the I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great way for the club to share resources around the, the ham community. Um, I would the only thing that I was going to say is I'd like to see him acknowledge the Delta Club at the beginning and end of his net, just because a lot of people may not stick around for the end of the net to hear the acknowledgement, and that's a really minor thing. Um, It'd be nice if he shared his preamble with us so we could see that and understand what he was saying. Other than that, I think it's a great idea. Anybody else have some thoughts or comments? No, I've, I've spoken with Tom several times and heard him as net control several times. I'm sure he'll do a fantastic job with it. I would agree. Okay. Yeah. I would agree. I would um, be... I would be interested in seeing the preamble, though. Not that it would be bad, but I would just be interested uh, to see it. And it looks like we've got enough time. He's not trying to call this until June, so he's got enough time to get to his club back and get their a preamble back to us for our next meeting. Um, so I think that's a totally reasonable request. Um, is there any other additional discussion that anyone might have? Okay. Nope. Um, I would entertain a motion that we approve this request. Um, and what I can do is I can reply back or Perry can reply back to him uh, saying uh, we approve and think it's a great idea 
but the conditions that we'd like to see are that the Delta Club be acknowledged at the beginning and the end of the preamble, and that we'd like to see a preview uh, of the preamble uh, back from the show before they called the first net in June. I'll second. Any you... okay? Motion and second. Is there any addition or just uh, proper motion and second? Let me get my words right. Uh, all, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Hearing none. That motion will carry. So we will. Uh, I will reply back to Tom, uh, and I'll copy. Perry as well, so that he'll have a record of it. Uh, basically, just saying exactly what we discussed. Uh, we love the idea. Thanks for it. Send us a copy of the preamble, acknowledge the beginning and the end. All right. Um, Jim, we're heading over to Treasury reports. All right. I'm going to share that. Okay. Everybody see my screen? Yeah. Yes. All right. Very good. All right. So, just the usual business here with our uh, our checking account we started the month with two, with twenty thousand six hundred and forty five dollars and sixty cents um we had six hundred and eighty dollars in deposits and a five dollar withdrawal had to explain that one um and with an ending balance of twenty one thousand three hundred and twenty dollars and sixty cents so for our deposits is six hundred and eighty dollars this is comprised of $180 in um, membership dues. Um, $80 of that is uh, from new members, $100 from uh, renewals. We did have one member that um, their dues were waived uh, that we took at the last meeting. And we did receive one donation um, along with a renewal in the amount of $500. So, um, that brings us to that total of six hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, we didn't have any any uh, activity with uh, club commissions, uh, with the exception of a five dollar um, returned item. So we had a deposit back in December uh, from the ARRL for a club commission. That five dollars was returned to us, or that. Or that uh, deposit was returned to us and I attempted to uh, to deposit it a second time and it was returned a second time. So I did reach out to um, the one of the um, accountants with ARRL and Zoe took a look into this a little further because uh, she did uh, for, she did uh, confirm that the check was good from the first deposit or first attempt. Uh, so she didn't understand why we got a return on it. And after looking into it further, she uh, found that it was actually, or it looks like there was two deposits attempted on the initial check one day apart. It was like December 28th and 29th. I think the deposit actually took place on the 27th, but it posted the 28th, and then it tried to post again on the 29th. So we think that maybe the the one from the second day, the 29th, um, was actually returned. And so I, I when I was at the bank today, I did uh, speak with Tori at the Bartlett branch, and she's looking into this a little further. Uh, sent her a copy of the original check so that she can um, compare the numbers that are on it. Just the, the document that was returned to us um, the second time is uh, illegible. So that explains the $5 um, withdrawal from our account. And so next month we may find that $5 credited back to the account after uh, Tori does her, her uh, investigation into that. So that- Was well, uh, that her, just a curious mm -hmm. question? Did, yeah. uh, since we, I just now thought of that since you meant, did we go back, did they ever reverse the very, very first $5 one? Yes. So in okay. in December, there was, only, it, the December statement only showed one $5 deposit. It didn't show the second attempt. Uh, 
that was only seen from the email that I received from the ARRL today that um, had a, a screenshot or, or you know, a little, uh, uh, you know, a snapshot of the, uh, of their records showing two attempts and one being a valid deposit. So I think we're going to find that, uh, that $5 will end up having to be credited to our account because the there's a mistake at Regents Bank with the deposits. So there's some confusion there. But we'll get to the we'll get to the bottom of this. So uh fortunately it's five dollars, not right. five hundred. <laughs> yeah. So then uh so everything's covered here. There are six hundred and eighty dollars uh deposited, five dollar withdrawal. Uh, makes up the $675 difference between the beginning and ending balance for the month. Um, our CDs continue to grow. Uh, we do have uh, one that's going to mature in January of 25, and the other one's going to mature uh, later on this year in, in uh, November of 24. So that's... That's all I have for that piece of the financial business. Okay. Um, I did. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Real quick. Any questions or discussion around Jim's report on that? Fantastic. We were along. Okay. Um, I did receive a, a an envelope to the. Uh, uh, you know what? Here, let me turn off my blur. Yep. See so let me do. give some context to this just real quick uh, sure. while Jim's pushing some buttons. Uh, Jim sent out a note that we had received uh, in the P.O. box, a letter from a law firm. Um, I wanted to just be totally transparent about it, not make a big deal out of it, but I didn't want to just have it open and waiting. So Jim's going to open that for us and read it to us uh, kind of live. Uh, I suspect we all know what's in that envelope, but we don't know for sure until Jim opens it. So Jim, if you could pan down just a little bit and then open that, we'd appreciate it. Sure. I'm, almost, I'm suspecting we're going to be a, a couple hundred dollars of billing sure. that's in that envelope. Don't, don't mind my knees over here over my shoulder, rearranging things here. <laughs> all right. I would suspect in the range of 350. Oh, are we, take, are we taking bets here? <laughs> do I hear for? Do I hear Joe for? has it. <laughs> what, what's the over? Joe under? may have advanced knowledge. Uh, that, that's an unfair advantage. No, it's it's more higher. Okay, so um, this is a statement dated uh, March twelfth, two thousand twenty-four. Um, it is regarding board dispute slash McDonald. And it says professional services through 229-2024. On that date, there was a drafted letter, phone calls with board president and another board member for 1.3 hours uh, current, for current services. Is that you, Joe? Probably so. I had talked, okay, I had great, actually Jim. called him on something else. Let's see, timekeeper, wait, wait, Peter D. Baskin. Okay, so it's a uh, at a rate of $350 per hour. The total came to $455. And so they're asking for us to remit the total balance due of, of $455. Sure if you can it was 400 and how much an hour? It's $350 per hour. At 1.3 hours. Yeah, a little 1.3 hours. Uh, I would question that, considering my conversation with him. Huh? Um, but it wasn't. It wasn't concerning. It actually wasn't concerning the McDonald. It was just to see what his hourly rate would be, if if uh, I engaged him or we engaged wow. him and he said it would be closer to 
two hundred dollars, considering that it was a, a club and a nonprofit. So. Okay. If he's going to charge for my time, he needs to to charge according to what he tells me. He's going to charge. I'm a, I'm afraid, Joe. Based on something else that I can discover, and uh, I did some more digging. I'll get to that in a second. That I don't think it was your conversation. I think it was multiple conversations by Ty. Based on the emails that we looked at last board meeting, where we opened up to the emails, uh, there was another string of emails that I found in Ty's email where he was having a conversation that same day uh, with the lawyer. And in that conversation, he was saying, hey, uh, I need to engage you about stopping estate sales and digging into some other things. So I think there were multiple conversations that Ty had with him on the phone. Uh, and I can okay. pull those emails up if we if we would like to look at them. I don't think he charged for yours, but okay. we could ask him for that. We could ask him for that accounting, but I, I'm not. It is of my opinion that I would say that we just pay the bill and move on and that we reduce the board's discretionary funding that we have each year. Uh, this year, we, we use the discretionary funding, to pay that bill and go forward you know that's what i'd like to see us do and not try to drag it out or do anything the the law firm was engaged uh that law firm doesn't need to be penalized for um doing a service that they thought they were doing correctly that's just that's that's my opinion and i'd okay. open up the discussion i'd open up the discussion I have no problem paying it. It's just I uh, want to reiterate that this this had no prior approval by the board, and uh, you know going forward, anything like this had no prior prior approval. Good there, John. Good catch. All of our dogs are going to start barking. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's somebody outside the, the front yard. They're just going nuts. I apologize. I mean, this this amount is almost, you know, 25% of what we take in and dues every year. So it's, you know, it's not an insignificant amount. And so, uh, yeah, it, it just reiterates the importance of making sure that we approve these kind of things going forward. Agreed. And, and I would reiterate, that was a good observation, John, that this was wow. indeed a non-board approved expense. Um, and that engaging the legal counsel is something that is not a, within a single person's board permission. We expect the board to be involved. In so move to pay it. I'll second. There's no reason to punish the law firm for doing what they were asked to do. All right. So we got a motion and a second to approve that bill. Is there uh, all in favor? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Hearing no opposed, the motion passes. Um, Perry and Jim, I'd ask that we make a note that we're we're as a board, we're using our uh, discretionary budget line item for that. Um, right. That may we may have to ask the membership to increase that towards the end of the year if something else comes up. But for now, we're going to use that discretionary line item to pay that bill. All right, and I will I'll scan this and add it to our um, to our shared documents. Okay. Thank you. And we'll talk about our shared drives here in a little bit. That's in the next, uh, I've, uh, I'll talk about the agenda in a minute. Do we have any other bills, Jim, that we need to talk about? No, no other bills at this time. Um, everything else is covered so far. Uh, I, I will uh, bring the checkbook to the um, the next club meeting and I'll need a, um, a signature for the check before I mail out right. the payment. All right. Uh, on a side note, just uh, I'll let Jim talk about it in his section when we get to the director's reports. But anyway, there's some more stuff coming. 
um, try to stick to my own agenda. Um, the next topic that was kind of on the agenda was the meter, the member meeting topics. We just wanted to go over those real quick, and that would be John Reiner's. All right, let me um, see if I can get to what I was looking at here just a minute ago. Um, so for the next member meeting, um, Pam Hilliard volunteered uh, to do a talk about the Mars crossband exercise coming up in May. And uh, then I was also going to talk about using software to program radios. I will be covering CHIRP, but I want to give honorable mentions to RT systems or uh, uh, other, other software uh, that's out there. Um, and then time permitting, I would like to give a uh, brief plug on the ships on the air exercise coming up, coming up June 1st and 2nd. Uh, then looking ahead to May, I haven't got anything concrete yet, but I want to reach out to Fred Miller to see if he would like to talk about the vertical antenna that he used for field day last year, which I thought was really, really cool. Field day's in June, so in May we should probably start talking about it. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about in May, and this would be like in the blitz segment, doesn't really require you know more than five minutes, we talk about W9IMS. Uh, anybody that knows me knows that I'm a diehard race fan. Uh, W9IMS is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway call sign. And they have a contest every May. Well, actually, it runs throughout the summer. Uh, but if you contact them during the, uh, the Indy Grand Prix, the Indy 500, and the week of the Brickyard 400, they'll actually send you a really nice frameable certificate. So just kind of thought that might be interesting uh, uh, to some folks. And they publish a schedule that I can do a screenshot of of when they're going to be on the air. It's primarily HF, but actually I made contact uh, with them last year uh, from my bleacher seat in turn one so on an HD. So anyway, that's that's just a little bit of what I've got cooking. Um, I don't want to take up too much time here, but I have several ideas where I've been brainstorming. Um, uh, Field day, I, I would like for us to look into the possibility of doing a fox hunt. Um, I'm also thinking about starting a new net just one night a week called the Wheel of Fortune net. And uh, Joe Plunk, I know I've talked to you about that, but it's where we could uh, kind of make ham radio a little bit more uh, of a competition or a game where I start a net 15 minutes before the airing of Wheel of Fortune on one night a week. And then if you want to guess the puzzle, you'll throw your suffix out there. And if you guess it right, then at the next meeting, you would come and redeem a ticket. If you don't show up to the next membership meeting, you lose that extra ticket. And that ticket goes towards the drawings at the end of the year. Um, I would also like, and, 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 and again, feel free to discuss or, or, or say nay to any of this stuff. Um, to see us stop the practice of not having a net on the nights that we have meetings. There are people that can't make it to the meetings. Why not call the uh, net, have somebody call the net from the meeting location? We can set up a uh, briefcase radio with a pizza pan and a mag mount, call the net, and that way it might help us to recruit uh, new net control operators. Because people could actually see what we're doing when we call, when we call a net. Uh, and I'll be quick here. I got a couple of, of, of other quick ideas. I'd like to start a monthly leaderboard where at every meeting we recognize who had the most uh, single sideband contacts, FTA contacts, um, uh, CW contacts, the most net check-ins, kind of make it a competition. And whoever wins their category that month, again, gets a free ticket into the drawing. Might be a little bit of honor system in 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 getting that going, but um, just something I, I thought. And, and and actually, next meeting, I just might ask for a show of hands. You know, who had more than 30 single sideband contacts? Who had more than 50 or 100? And uh, just get a show of hands. And uh, the idea behind that is to get more people talking on the air. Uh, last but not least, um, and I don't know who I would tap to do this, 
Um, but uh, Dave Campbell, uh, KD4NOQ, used to always talk about anytime there was any kind of visible or any kind of pass with the uh, International Space Station. And he used to do that on our nightly nets and would like to see if I could recruit somebody that when there's a visible pass or a good pass, uh, see that brought back. And I, I, I really don't know who would be good for doing that. So if you guys know of somebody Rick, that, that I could recruit. Rick Tillman comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a short announcement during an announcement session of, of, of where the ISS is and, and what it's doing if it's making a pass overhead. Um, I specifically remember Dave calling it one night. My wife and I went to a Mexican restaurant, and as we were coming out, we saw it passing overhead. So just a few things I'm throwing out there. I know I threw a lot out, but that's just where my mind is right now. So that's all I got. Well, thanks, John. I do want to make an observation just kind of real quick. We are, uh, while we're not going to try to do three presentations in the meeting format, we are going to try to do two. I think that uh, is a good balance for the membership meeting. Uh, it gives us kind of a third, a third, a third, a third for business, a third for presentation, and a third for the final presentation, and then we can wrap up and get out of there. And it shouldn't drag on, and it shouldn't be too long, and it, it's uh, just enough time that it can be in depth, but it's not uh, so short that it's just a bite. And the other thing that we can also do with this is the, we have the flexibility to say, hey, on the special topic, like the adrenal topic where we had, that's it. Uh, we want to go in depth with this and the presenters coming in as, a, as an as a recognized expert. We want to go ahead and say, hey, we'll give them both sections of our presentation time and we'll just split the presentation with a break. Yep. Uh, so I think that was a, a, a I think that's a good, fair, workable solution towards kind of making our meeting format uh, not be one long uh, presentation. Yep. I Any agree. thoughts or feedback around that? All right. Uh, well, John, thanks for that. Um, I would look forward to, a uh, I would encourage you to put a nice, strong article into Sparks. Hint, hint, wink, wink. <laughs> uh, about some of those ideas and find some uh, people to help you with that. Right. Uh, I bet they're out there and that we can reach out to them with Sparks and uh, even make an announcement on some of the nets, um, provided that uh, you feel comfortable doing that. Right. I have no problems with that. Uh, if anyone else does, please speak up. Um, so real quick, I want to share the, share the screen just super quick again. Um, um, circle back around. So what I tried to do, uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, it's all gentlemen tonight, is I split our, our agenda kind of into two pieces. We got to have, we've got recurring agenda topics that we've got to do. We're going to do a quick, we got two standing committees that we're going to work with for a bit. And then we'll do some, we'll just, uh, kind of a board member reports. So what I did is I put all the recurring kind of agenda items that we've got to do to conduct business kind of in the first half of new business. And then the second part of new business is just a, a, a various list of things that we need to kind of talk through. Uh, and then after that, we'll go through and kind of talk through and give everybody a chance to cover anything that they may not have had a chance to cover in any of the other topics. And we'll try to stay on time. Being cognizant of that, we're 720, so we're, we're cruising along pretty good. Uh, with that, I'm going to yield the floor and I want to uh, introduce uh, again, Dan, welcome to the board. Um, I know you've got some things you want to talk about repeaters. Uh, we've had some conversations, and if you'll bring us up to speed on what your thoughts on that, um, I will yield the floor to you and, and uh, bring us up to speed. Yeah, so for the next hour and a half, I would like to, uh, no. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Share screen. And Dan should know that tower over there in Brunswick intimately from his front yard. Yeah, I can pretty much use a wet noodle as an antenna and still be full quieting. Um, yeah, he sent me a he sent me a picture that he took with his camera. I was amazed at. But hey. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the right antenna. I need to get closer. Um, uh, Joe sent me this, and I don't know if y'all have seen it yet. 
And this is kind of, um, didn't want to really show this picture just to say gross, but this was the 440 repeater. And I don't know if y'all have been in that building before. There's kind of a, I don't know, it's just a big building on the far end so that it makes us have a long coax run is our room where the 8-2 is. Closer towards the repeater and kind of an open area in a corner is the 440 machine. Uh, this was before they started working on it. Uh, just kind of note for uh, later on the power amp fire that is no longer there because it doesn't work. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm kind of like jumping into the middle of all this. This is what it looks like now. Uh, they they racked on their work day. They racked everything. There's amp the duplexer. Haven't figured out what this is yet. That was the old power supply for the old Motorola Micor uh, repeater that was in the rack. Okay. Um, I think they left. I think they left it there as a twelve volt power supply, um, in the hopes that it would be reusable. Eventually, that's probably going to end up come having to come out. Um, yep. But anyway, um, the Mirage amp was sitting on that shelf that's empty under the duplexers. Yeah the the Mirage amp is a mobile amp. And those things don't last long at full duty cycle. You get maybe a year out of it. And the fusion repeater is set at 20 watts. And that's because you can't really run a fusion repeater at full power because it's really just two mobiles in a case. Um, I think when the DR1Xs came out, they ran them. Everybody ran them full power, and after a year, they started going out, and they said, well, it's because the heat sink wasn't fully machined right, but then they came out and fixed them and then said, eh, full-duty cycle, 20 watts. Um, let's see. So that's been cleaned up. It's got battery backup, and I think it may have had a battery, but I don't know that it was hooked up. Yeah, the battery was the battery was there to run the Mirage amp. They had it running off of the battery directly, um, with a trickle charge float charging the battery at the time that it was uh, cleaned up. Yeah, that was. Let's see. So yep. we'll get to all that in a little bit. This is the old cabinet. There's two cabinets inside. This was on the far wall. And they had on the other wall is where the hard line input is. So they had a big old cable that went up and across the room and back down the other side. And what they did was they took everything and moved it over to the other cabinet. And that gave them a lot shorter jumper. We so actually, we actually moved the whole cabinet. We dragged it across yeah. the floor. Yeah. So a lot of work. That's why it took them a what, day and a half. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. This is part of the repeater controller. It's just kind of laying there on the top of, paper to insulate it so we'll probably need to work on that sometime um just bare wires this was the old connector like you say you saw that it went up and across the room and now it's a short one that comes right out of the cabinet that they moved and it's a whole lot better connector uh, and that's mainly what they've done is just clean up the mounting, move things. Um, uh, I think, I think there's a battery sitting in the bottom of the eight, two 
or is there? No, the eight no, two sir, had a battery. There's, no, uh, there's a battery to the side the of the eight two. It was. Yes, this. Where was it? Yeah. There is no. That is not a battery. There is no battery in the eight two rack at all. Um. At all. Yeah, nope, um, there never was one. It's the the ICOM. The ICOM repeater is AC powered. Um, there was there a battery any on sort it. of generator power out there in the event of power failure. Oh yeah, a big one. Okay. Well, but I don't think our I don't think our room circuits are on generator power. Okay. Yeah, because I think the weekend after the membership meeting, uh, there was a storm came through, and I noticed the eight two was offline for several hours. So I don't know if that corresponded with a a uh, power outage at the site. Um, my guess is it probably was. Um, so probably we're going to, we're going to to take a look at spending some money and we're probably going to go over budget. So, um, I think I want to take a look at getting some sort of battery back up if we can. Uh, there's no lightning protection right now. Um, there was also a mention in their discussion about putting up a power strip with remote. Uh, but that would also require some way to activate the remote. So we, we're not sure if we can get internet at the site or not. Joe can cover the fun reasons why, but. And then they were also mentioning uh, N versus the, what, the SOPL 239s. Uh, they're kind of lossy, but I don't know what the loss is. So I don't know what measurements they took, and I don't know what the output power of out of the duplexers are. So I remember a couple of those measurements, uh, Dan, mainly for the 8.2 machine because the 440 machine hadn't been measured at the time. Um, the 8.2 machine was putting 23, 29 watts into the Heliax going up the tower. So that was after it left the cans, uh, after the jumper, uh, at the Heliax, it was 29 watts. Okay, then that um, line goes... And all of those measurements were taken. Joe Tamboli took all those measurements and meticulously recorded them. Um, I do not anticipate that we will get those measurements. We will probably have to have a crew that use spearhead and lead and uh, re-measure. And it may be a good thing to do because one of the things that I do think we want to do, and you may want to cover this or you may be covering it, I think we need to put in all new cables um, for the duplexers for both the H2 and the uh, 440. Yeah, and, and that's to kind of get the things to a known state. We don't know where a lot of things have come from or how long they've been there. Uh, we don't know whether some of those were bought new when they put the repeater in in 98, 99, or whether it came from the old site, I'm not really sure. Um, so 29 watts out at the duplexer, all right, out into Heliax. Yep. Um, approximately take, nine. Just as a just a data point, I'll share it with you. The that 40 foot jumper that went up and over that was going from one side of the room to the other was costing us three watts. So just by moving the cabinet over from one side of the room to the other side of the room and uh, using the twist lock power, got us three more watts up the coax. Uh, some of the calculations are off, but it's okay. Um, so for one five eight inch hard lines, 0.254 loss per hundred feet, approximately nine hundred foot run because we got to go across. 
the uh, building out through the cable raceway and into the antenna. So that'd be about a 0.23 dB loss. And according to the website, the Sinclair has a 6 dB gain. So total of a little over 3 dB gain. Uh, so you're probably putting out 60 watts ERP. Uh, if we looked at doing a 100 watt amp, and that would be to get us uh, a little bit better reach for the mobiles and handhelds who are have crappy antennas and would probably help their uh, help them. We we don't I don't know that we there. Joe and I talked about more power uh, and whether that would produce an alligator repeater. You know, all mouth, no ears, to where you would go. I hear the repeater fine, but I can't even kerchunk it. So. Um, 100 watts versus 200. Um, we, we may end up having to do 200 watts on the UHF one for a, a number of reasons, but I think 100 watts on the VHF 8.2 machine seems reasonable. It, it's not doing too bad now. Um, you may hear me on the repeater now, and I ask people where they're at and what kind of... Uh, setup they have and sometimes i think wow the repeater is terrible and then i find out now ah, they're sitting in their house using a mag mount on their uh filing cabinet you know down south of germantown so it, it's receive seems to be doing all right uh 443 machine they've got it tuned down to 20 watts probably losing once again i don't know what the power output was uh so i i assume a standard 1.5 db duplexer 4.9 db loss for 7 8 hardline that's 0.81 times 600 feet or 6 100 feet i don't know what intent is up there i'm assuming that it's 6 db um it may be better. So you're really just about a wash and it's getting out 18 Watts and people are like, they can't hear the repeater. They may be keying it up, but they can't hear even the kerchunk. Yeah. And um, one of the reasons that we're fighting on that one is it's on seven eighths inch hard line. So it's not on inch and five eighths, a little more loss. And it's a higher frequency. Uh, yep. Real quick question: We've got a we've got someone that joined us. Uh, you've got yourself identified as Delta Club. Uh, is that you, Mike? No, Mike's on. I would suspect yeah, that it's Mary Jean. Okay, Mike. I see you. I didn't. Uh, who's who's in as Delta Club, please? Uh, okay, second time. Who's in as Delta Club, please? Is that our? Is that the immediate past president? Please identify yourself, or I will remove you from the meeting. All right, I'm going to remove uh, Delta Club from the meeting. All right, uh, continue. I apologize, Dan. That's okay. Um, at least a hundred watt amp, maybe more, but that would do pretty good. But yeah, we like I say can't run the fusion repeater more than twenty watts, and you got a lot more loss. So it may be eighteen, it may be fifteen, because I don't know what the loss is for the jumper to the antenna. Um, I got to go back and shoot it again with the camera. Uh, one picture that I took, it looked like the cable 
was looped a couple of times and then zip tied and then out to the antenna. And I don't know if that is our antenna or not. I couldn't tell. Um, so then, so 443 seven machine reaches poor and more power for eight, two increases the clarity on the mobiles. Um, so I've just started pricing, um, Joe and I just talked about it Friday. Uh, I guess MJR had mentioned the, um, he had mentioned top tech, but when I look at top tech, I don't see any specs repeater wise. And I can't really tell that it would be repeater grade. Uh, so what I've started looking at is the Henry repeaters and I'm, kind of a repeaterbuilders.com person. They have a lot of technical information out there, a lot of lessons learned from people who've maintained repeaters for the last 20 years. And Henry is a pretty good brand. Uh, I know Joe was wanting to take a look at getting it from DX Engineering, and I don't know if they can get those. Uh, we can get the, we can get them either... I know we can get them from Bridgecom. I don't know if we can get them directly from Henry. They've got pricing out there, but it's standard pricing. It's the same as Bridgecom. Uh, I looked at Mirage in a repeater grade from MFJ, and they have repeater grade. I mean, big heat sinks and everything, but they all show out of stock. So I, I don't know, haven't looked to see for an alternate source, but I figure it's MFJ why when they stock it, but, but a hundred watt amplifier is going to be run you 80 to a thousand dollars. Two watts would be around 14 to $1,500. Uh, like I said, I've been looking for a hundred percent duty cycle rating on Henry. They say hundred percent duty cycle and will support FM and digital modes. Uh, it doesn't specify DMR exactly, but the, on a repeater, a DMR repeater, if we use it would um, transmit both slots. So we don't have to worry about pulse transmit and a 30 amp supply if we go the 100 watts it'd be around 200 210 up to 300 if we went to like a 45 amp supply for 200 watts and we probably need to get a couple of lightning arresters too for everything and cables so that's okay. that's what i figured out this weekend okay Use the repeaters. <laughs> uh, I've been throwing my call out there and people are popping up out of the uh, woodwork. I'm getting old hams, new hams. I'm inviting them to meetings, inviting them to the ham fest. So Joe always comes back to me at a lunch on a Thursday or Friday. So it's good. Any questions? So I was going to uh, kind of wrap up. So based on kind of a needs priority, uh, Dan, what would you identify? Uh, how would you prioritize our kind of needs uh, and uh, priority of getting this equipment in place? Well, I, the 3.7 is just, I think I would probably get it set up first because mm -hmm. it's just not usable very much outside of a certain radius. So that would help us get our yeah. 3.7 back running. Um, I don't know what we can do for battery backup. Uh, 
that's just kind of a thought I've had in the last day and I haven't researched that. I'm still reading through manuals and figuring out how this, some, some of the stuff sets up. Um, I would say just kind of as an aside, uh, at, we're at both ends of the building. Um, if uh, we wanted to throw a little solar, because we don't pull a lot of watts, we could potentially throw a little solar panel out there to float our batteries. We wanted to entertain that as a an option. Um, we might be able to get on the generate on the gen set that's there, but I don't know if we are or not. We'd have to trace the circuit back. Um, oh, do you have a? I recommend so the for the for the seven for for the UHF machine. Do you have a recommendation as to whether we'd want to go Mirage or Henry? Uh, and do you think that to get the seven hundred machine back, we could get uh, the amplifier and the cables and the power supply for less than what's your kind of running budget? Do you think we could pull that off for? Um. I like the, the Henry's about the same, maybe slightly more than the Mirage. And they, it seems to be a little bit closer to commercial grade without having to hit the $1,800 professional. So I think that for under a thousand, probably another 200 for a new power supply. And Lightning arresters. I'm not I haven't looked at the price for that. It's about two hundred maybe. And uh you'd probably would you do a hundred for the seven would you do a hundred amp or I mean hundred watts or two hundred watt for the UHF? I'm guessing right now to a uh, hundred watts. I, I I don't have a lot of experience with UHF repeaters. I don't know what other people are running right now, but a, a hundred watts or two hundred. That will for sure overcome the cable loss that we're experiencing. So, um, uh, go ahead. Yeah, let's go back to my calculation. So let's see. Hundred watts might get us ninety watts out or more. Or less. I like I said, this is all well ninety is more is, is, is like thirty percent more than what we're getting out of the A two right now. So Yeah. Granted the A two's got more height on us, but uh just my two cents. So I, I kind of ask you, Dan, and put you on the spot a little bit to ask you kind of what we would prioritize. I'm kind of sensing that we might want to prioritize the UHF 4437 yeah. machine a little bit above the 82 machine. Um, yep. I'd like, I would like to try to get, um, it, it, I'd like to pull something together um, to potentially have something at the membership meeting so we could at least maybe talk to the members and say, hey, we're going to spend this. So maybe we can firm this up and circulate it um, and either, either have a quick board meeting before the membership meeting or at the membership meeting or just present it at the membership meeting. We can talk about that in a second. But I'd yeah. like to try to get the, the UHF machine back up to snuff uh, this month, if possible. Uh, so I'm open to the board and listening and would uh, like to hear some feedback on that and thoughts from everybody. I don't mean to be the most vocal of the group, but, you know, my thoughts are prioritizing the 4437 over the A2 makes absolute sense. Uh, we're getting check-ins from Crowley Ridge, Crowley's Ridge. We're getting check-ins from Clarksdale. The the eight two uh seems to be the better of the two machines. So to shore this up uh just really seems to make sense to me if that's where we wanted to to focus our attention. 
to to echo that for just a second, um, I think that per makes perfect sense. I would like to propose that we potentially recable the eight to a machine, and that would be the extent of what we do for it initially, because all the cables that are in that one. just at the rack level. Yeah, just at the rack okay. level. All the duplex. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> not up the tower. Just the duplexers. They're all yeah. the the coax there is all scavenged. It's all it's not double shielded. It's it's some of them have questionable terminations. They all test good. They're not inducing a bunch of loss, but that would put everything at the base of the of the tower at a good standing. The only problem is those cables are about seventy bucks a pop, and you would need a bunch. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's about five hundred dollars worth of cables. But I don't know if we've got. We, we may have to ask for additional budgets where I'm going to ultimately. I think we can do the UHF machine within the budget scope that we've already appropriated for the for the year. We will have to come back and ask for additional budget, probably just a little bit, to finish the the work that we've proposed to do for the. Uh, eight two and to recable it and to potentially put an amplifier on it to overcome the cable loss. Um, so everybody else has been quiet. Any other thoughts or observations, comments? I've got a question. Um, I know that that the uh, repeater committee had been looking at putting together a report, and that there had been some previous discussion regarding whether the the hard line going up the tower or had any issues um have have we ruled out any problems with um with that hard line or there so, no taken or anything i just want to make sure that we're not um you know, so I'll, I'll being that that was the only one that was there and can comment on it i did see the 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 tdr shot that was done on the 82 cable um, the TDR shot on the 8-2 cable, it's one and five-eighths inch heliax. Uh, the building's about 200 feet long. Uh, and then we're at the 700 foot level of the tower. Um, the heliax comes out of our repeater room, goes through a large open space. And then there is, there's a combination of, an, uh, of a, a very gentle S-curve uh in a horizontal translation and then there's a gentle s curve in a vertical translation so basically the heliax twist and goes uh and changes horizontal and vertical elevation to go through a firewall penetration and then it goes out to the tower where it 90s up and goes up the tower um the tdr shot that was uh done by a rig expert sees that S curve in the heliax. Um, it doesn't say that there's a fault. It doesn't say that there's uh, a dead short. It just sees it. It, there, it creates reflections. And the way time domain reflectometry works is it measures a, a pulse and a reflection that comes back. And so what the, what the rig expert, and you even go out and read on rig experts uh, sites, they're not shooting a true TDR shot. They're kind of faking it uh, with a frequency response uh, shot that they're kind of emulating a TDR. So what they're actually, and I, I don't know this for sure. I'm just kind of, I'm telling you what I saw. At the exact 70 foot spot, which is where that S curve is when you walk it off and measure it off, the rig expert was seeing a, a, a spike. Um, and then it was fine going all the way up to the antenna. So it's seeing the, it's seeing the bend in the cable. It's not that the cable's bad. It's not that the cable's good or indifferent. It's just seeing reflections. And what that's translating to is introducing a little bit of SWR for us, but I don't think that we've got uh, um, anything. Uh, I it did not see anything based on what I saw looking over the shoulder of uh, Joe Tamboli, who was shooting the rig expert. When we go back out there, Dan, let me know. I'll take my rig expert out there and we can shoot it again and see what we see. Why don't we uh, get another I think uh, our coax PDR? 
get an oscilloscope and a TDR unit and uh, go out. Yeah, if we know someone that has an actual TDR, yeah, we'd welcome yep. the opportunity to, for for them to come out and actually shoot a an honest to goodness TDR on both the uh, eight two machine and the seven hundred machine. And that would be a good thing to do. But to the, I think it was John you asked the question or Jim asked the question. I don't believe that the heat the the nine hundred the seven hundred foot Heliax appeared to be intact and in good working order. We were unable to shoot the 500 foot one and five eighths Heliax because it's terminated in a 20 foot ceiling and it has a um, a seven eighths inch hard line uh, Heliax run for 60 feet that goes back to the repeater room and that's disconnected currently. That, however, is the old 8.2 repeater run and we know we had issues on that Heliax. So that one is currently not in use. Did that answer the question? Yes. Yeah. I was just wondering if there's, you know, if we had any insight into any other issues that maybe looking at, or if, or if uh, we can put those fears to bed that, you know, that there's no, no um, immediate, uh, you know, need for, for work on the Heliax. Yeah, I don't think that there's any immediate need, but what I would also ask us as a board to consider is we need to consider that we probably need to start thinking about a life cycle for this equipment. It's been in place since the 1999, early 2000s, and the coax that we that was put up for us was not actually new coax. It was a uh, coax that was salvaged from the old tower. Um, so as we are working and fundraising and recruiting members, we probably need to put in the back of our minds that we probably need to put, you know, put 10, put, you know, 90 cents over to do club things and put 10 cents away to, for a Heliax fund because we're eventually going to need to spend some money on some Heliax. Not, not yeah, today. We, we know, we know maybe it doesn't Maybe not last even forever. tomorrow. Right. Say again. So we know that it doesn't last forever. You know, it's, yep. it's out there in the elements. All right. Um, so just as a, uh, to kind of wrap this up, unless there's any other questions, does anybody have any other questions or discussion? I'm running out of time. I was going to, I promise I was going to try to keep it at 90 minutes and I got six minutes and I haven't even gotten to the other topics. Yeah. I'll put real um, numbers for the 3.7 and. Okay. And I'll take your cable guess. Cause you say we want to. We'll work on the UHF on VHF 8.2. We'll just do cables. And see what we get there. But if we get that under 2,000, then I think we're good. Yes, sir. We do have a line item budget for $2,000. Um four repeaters um i think we can get the seven the the uhf i think we can get it back up to snuff and possibly get the eight two fully recabled on the low side before we go up the heliax i think we could probably stay in that budget and then based on that we'll come back to the membership and say okay these are the next steps that we want to do and the other thing that we may have to do with that dan is you still got five other repeaters that you got to go visit with your team uh, and we may need yeah. we, we may need more pressing repairs on that other those other repeaters, um, but we know we know that we don't have a, a high functioning machine right now with the four four three seven hundred machine. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask the board to to let uh, uh, to entertain giving Dan permission to go seek quotes uh, for the UHF machine uh, to start uh, reporting on that and to report back to us as a group. And let's try to get something uh, presented to the membership so that we can bring the UHF 443700 machine back up at the membership meeting next week. Any discussion around that? I uh, second. All right. Fair enough. All right. So we've got a motion and a second just to, to and what we're motioning on is, Dan, we're going to give you uh, we're going to ask you to go seek quotes and, and uh, hard numbers 
Okay. Uh, even leveraging the fact that asking for permission as a club to uh, ask for any discounts, uh, I'll get you set up on a deltaclub.org email as an aside. So the motion is to give Dan that permission to go start soliciting uh, for equipment uh, quotes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So, Dan, I'll get you set up on a Delta Club uh, email so you can start soliciting for that. Uh, report back to us as quick as we can. I'd love to be able to report something to the membership saying that we've got uh, a repair on the way. All right. Any other questions for Dan on the repeater? Repeaters. All right. Um, we uh, we formed a bylaws committee. I talked to Mary Jean. She's the committee chair for the bylaws committee. She has still form. She has nothing to report. She is still formulating her committee. Um, so that's where that stands. Um, so let me ask a quick, a uh, real quick question of the board. Um, uh, I'm committed to keeping this short. Um, uh, we're at a, essentially the 90 minute mark. Uh, how much further does everyone want to press on? And at what point do we want to, uh, say, okay, I've had enough for the night. Um, and then we can table some of this or we can work through it. So I'll just open that up real quick. Cause I'm committed to not dragging this on for eternity. If we need to revisit, that's fine. I know uh, the longer we go, the the more uh, capitulation I'll have to give my. <laughs> to, to I understand. Keep... Yeah, I, I, I do think we may have to we may have to have a, a a short pickup meeting in the next four or five weeks because I think we're just a, as a board we're, we've we had some distractions. I think we may have to have a little short pickup meeting to try to get some of our tasks back on on kind of on track. But I do see um, some real items quick. of interest here. Yeah. So go yep. ahead. A couple of items real quick. Um Jim and I went to the bank today and got signatures changed and the previous signature removed. Um that had popped up. I put that out uh to everyone that uh I had seen some traffic that was disturbing. So we went and just we expedited that and got that taken care of. Um Jim did complete our second secretary of state uh, filing for state of Tennessee. Um, Jim, can you talk a little bit about what we talked about in the uh, parking lot of the bank real quick? Yeah. So there's two portion or two, uh, I guess two portions of the Tennessee filing. One is the uh, annual report that has to be filed by um, April 1st. And that was completed. And then there's a second portion, which I um, guess I was, was not fully aware of, um, and that is uh, an exemption report for the state of Tennessee for, uh, for charitable um, organizations. And so um, I have not filed that yet, and I have several years to go back and file. Um, so I have uh, I have that on my on my plate to uh, complete. I have um, yet this year's has to be done by uh, June or the end of June, I guess. And uh, the previous years, I'm working on that right now to to get us um, up to date with the with the uh, filings, so that we can uh, continue to uh, uh, be a, char a charitable organization. Charitable solicitor. Yeah, solicitor. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, just full transparency there, the state of Tennessee said, hey, we noticed you haven't filed a couple of Jim notified and let me know that. And I was just making everybody aware. We've got some time to correct it and he's on top of it. It's not right. a huge thing. You know, it, it happens. So it's not a big concern. Um, but Jim is working to to fix that and re get those past years filed. Yeah. So so the, the state reached out to me with, you know, they sent a, a letter saying, hey, we noticed you haven't filed these. Um, you know, if, we're going to give you 45 days to uh, to, you know, bring these up to date or, or, or actually it's 45 days just to begin addressing this. And so um, so I'll get in touch with uh, 
with the gentleman on the on the letter and make sure that he's aware that uh, that yes, we do still want to have our club uh, considered a, a charitable uh, organization, and so that'll uh, at, at the ne at our next uh, board meeting, I'll have a, an update with that completion or sooner. Okay, thank you for that update. Um, I do want to address, uh, I think everyone saw Mary Jean's final verdict on immediate past president. Uh, Mary Jean uh, researched it extensively and her role as immediate past president is past. Uh, our immediate past president at this point is uh, Ty. Uh, he is a, a board officer and a board member as a function of the immediate past president until such time as the rules might change. Um, as that's the case, uh, invitations will be sent um, to Ty uh, for each board meeting. Whether he chooses to attend is his choice. Um, that will be up to him. Uh, Joe, did you have anything to report back on the errors and omissions insurance? I've sent it out to inquire to three different companies and have not gotten any replies back yet. Quick question. Uh, was Ty made aware of this already, or is he yet to be made aware of this? Uh, Ty was uh, the meeting notification that was sent out for everyone today, uh, this afternoon, included Ty okay. um, to his uh, personal address so that he was aware that he, that he, that he was invited to the meeting. Um, I'm afraid that he may have been the Delta Club person that was yeah. in. I, I just didn't that. choose to identify, but uh, when challenged to identify and he chose not to, uh, it was elected that it is appropriate to remove them from the meeting if you're not going to identify who you whoever are. Whoever that may have been, uh, it might not have Correct, been. whoever that was. We don't know who it was because they did not identify themselves. Absolutely. But going, going, going forward, he will be sent a notification that we are having a meeting. He will be able to attend or he can choose not to attend or choose to attend. However, with that being said, should uh, disorderly or inappropriate contact be uh, forthcoming, then as a board, we'll just say enough is enough. We're not going to we're not going to take for that. And we'll either uh, ask for it to stop or we'll we'll remove the from the meeting or we'll we'll deal with it as we have to deal with it at the time. Should that happen to wow. I, I believe that's the appropriate course of action. Gotcha. All right. Um, if anyone needs, it, it's now past 90 minutes. It's 8.04. If anybody needs to leave, please let me know. Otherwise, we can kind of talk through a couple of these real quick and try to get through. But uh, I don't want to I don't want to stay too long. Prefest well, table. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to get out. But um, Dan, if you can send me your contact information and maybe a bio for me to put uh, on to the. Uh, a website that would be greatly appreciated okay let's right. talk about that real quick mike let's skip down to website updates can you take a few minutes in the next few days and try to update the bios on the website yes, and uh and move those around and put open positions out there and try to get that taken done taken care of i've got yes, a few sir, things I that, that i want to put into uh into my bio i was going to rework a couple of things so i'll resend you my bio as well okay um look for that in the next few days yeah um, so dan then, uh, email address and a phone number if you're okay with that and then uh, that will go into sparks and then the uh, bio will be what would go on the website on the board of directors and and dan you will you do have a delta club email if you choose to use it uh, we'd prefer that you use the delta club email if possible but we can talk about that as well and so, Joe, I did try to sign up for that tonight, and the link uh, said that it, I guess, is timed out. So okay. can you resend that to me, please? Absolutely. I will go, I'll be glad to send that to you. Um, can I take it just a real – let me just segue before you leave. Let me just segue real quick into a um, – I want to just show a couple of things that uh, – that, Um, whoever posts our video, 
I need you to edit out that section because that was, I need you to edit that little clip out, please. Um, Which, uh, that, that need to be on the web. Oh. That was a screen share violation. I actually showed something that wasn't supposed to be shown. Um, but what I want to show real quick is the, um, Uh, our Google Drive that's out there. I have been spending some time working on uh, kind of how this really should have been set up. Uh, so what we've got, we'll have uh, our board meeting agendas. We'll have a common drive. Uh, we'll have a place for our minutes to land. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll add the dark board uh, as the to the meeting minutes so that uh, the board meeting minutes, all of the board members can see the, the meeting minutes. Um, and we'll do this, we'll add, you know, we'll do the same thing for the member meeting minutes and agendas. Membership applications is already currently um, created. I went ahead and created a, a shared drive for a photo archive. So if we've got training events or membership meetings or activities where we take photos, Uh, we'll be able to go in here and create those and drop those photos into a photo archive. And then uh, on the, we'll also be able to as a, have another spot if we choose to archive all of our Sparks issues. And then in the repeater, in the repeater documents, there is a, a folder for each one of the repeaters. So as we create documentation around and about our repeater, Uh, whether that's an access log or a quote for equipment or pictures or conversation or whatever we need, we can put each one of those items in the appropriate folder for each one of our repeaters that we um, have. So that's kind of the shared drives. Um, uh, eventually, I envision that we'll have a shared drive for transition documents. Okay, so what happens when a president transitions or... Um, what happens when a, a, a role transitions, here's kind of the steps that need to be, and we'll create a shared document space for those as well. And it, it'll be easy to access. Any questions on that? I just want to mention that uh, it looks like we had somebody join us again. Okay. Um, all right, so Delta Club, please identify yourself. You're, you're identified as Delta Club in the meeting. Please, who are you? I'm going to ask you to unmute, please. You're identified as Delta Club. Would you let us know who you are, please? Who's joining us with the name Delta Club? Either turn your video on or tell us who you are, please. All right, last chance. Delta Club, let us know who you are. I'm going to have to ask you. I'll have to remove you from the meeting. Guests, guests are certainly welcome, but we need to know who you are. All right, I'm going to remove that. Thank you, Jim. All right, um, errors from free first. Uh, anything else for Mike? Let's try to get uh, let's try to get our Sparks updates. Uh, you know, John, I know you had some updates that you were probably going to want to put in Sparks. Let's yeah. try to get our updates to Mike so he's not working until late hours of Sunday trying to get that out. I'd like to try to get it out early if we could, please. I have divisional drill uh, on Saturday, so I will be able to work on it uh, Saturday night, but the majority of the work will probably occur Sunday morning. So okay. yeah, that, will, that fits my... I'll, I'll try to get you everything that I've got. Sounds good. Thank you. I did not prepare a signal report. Uh, I forgot about that. 
talked about Google Workspace, talked about Shared Drive, talked about email addresses. Um, I did a little work on distribution lists and groups. Why don't I do this? Um, any, any, if anybody's interested in our Google Workspace and would like to dive into a little deeper dive on that, please send me an email and I'll just set up a follow-up meeting to kind of go around our Google Workspace. That way we can take a large chunk of that and just defer that to that. Uh, Joe, I'll reach out to you about the ARL website update after this meeting, if that's okay, and try to knock that out. Okay. Um, I'd like to try to streamline the spark. Say again, please. I'm getting there. Coming I'm back still. up. The, I'm coming back up the stack. I, I I was getting there. I was coming back up. Um. All right, Mike. I, I know you got to leave. I'd like to try to streamline Sparks a little bit, but we can talk about it later. All right, Huntsville, Joe. Go ahead, Huntsville. Uh, All right. Good night, everybody. I need to share. Sure. Go ahead. Can everybody see this spreadsheet? Yes, sir. Yep, I can see it. Okay, I got quotes from uh, Klein Tours. It's twenty five hundred and seventy five dollars this year. Uh, Danvers, I'm assuming it's going to be uh, seven fifty for two uh, biscuits. I've put in a call and haven't gotten a call back, but off of their uh, what they did last year off of their uh, catering uh, is about this. That's about it to where uh, here's it based on 2,575. However, we already have a $200 uh, amount towards the uh, bus trip. So that'd be 2,375 figure would be up here. And then if we take the $500 donation that we had, would put it down to 1875. And if that were the case, we would need 26 people to, to break even if we're charging $99 a person. Uh, 26 people is, is a realistic uh, figure. Uh, but uh, I really don't want to start uh, soliciting funds until at least May, if not June. Uh, for it, but I'd like to get it out to people. Uh, so uh, uh, that's why I have the three figures there, and it, you can see. And it, and if we get a lot more people, we can do a rebate to the people. Um, you know, if we get thirty people, uh, we could uh, give them ten dollars back. Uh, if that were the case and uh, get everybody to uh, encourage a, a fellow ham to come with them. But just didn't know what, what y'all wanted to do, but I propose these items. Um, I think the number that strikes me, just me off, I'll speak first and not just because any other, I just started speaking. Um, I think $100 or $120 are the two numbers that we would make good targets. Um, 100 is very reasonable. 120 is not bad, uh, considering it includes the bus ride, admission to the, the ham fest, and it includes food and drinks. I don't consider 120 that bad. Um, what's the maximum number of people that have attended the bus trip, Joe? I don't know, 44 at one time, but we've only been having about 25, 26, 27 of the last six or seven years. Okay. But I, I you know, I'd be willing to, you know, uh, with the $200, if we get 30 people on board, um, uh, The break in break even is is right at uh, thirty two people, which is a little bit of a stretch from what we've had in the past few years. 
I think we've had. I'd like to try to figure out how to how to year. not use the five. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, I think we had 26 last year, and four of those people did not show for one reason or another. But did they pay? They paid. Yes. There's okay. no refund. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I, I'd like to figure out how to not use the $500 donation. Um, uh, if we, I'd like to if, use it if we need to, but if we can not use it, that'd be ideal. Um, and I think that's totally within, I think, a, you know, 31, 32 people is totally within the stretch of being able to do this. If we should get out there and we promote it and we ask, you know, we've got, uh, 15 new technicians that are out there. I was updating, uh, the net control spreadsheet and I was, we're at, almost 800 calls that are in that spreadsheet. There are a lot of people out there that have checked in on the Delta net at one point in time on a side note. I think we can get out there and, 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 and get this promoted and active. Um, that seems reasonable, um, for a... go ahead. Oh, just a quick observation in our budget that we approved, uh it looks like we were taking in 2500 for bus trip but spending 3000 and that's not counting the donation i believe or maybe i maybe i'm wrong i don't know it was about 2600 25 about 2500 2500 is what we earmarked for income so, and then our expenditure it says 3000 uh, right, because I was just I just looked at that, Joe. You've got the, the columns of numbers are only for the bus fare. You're not looking at no, all no, the that, other. That's stuff. including all the other numbers, uh, including the, and this is based on a premise of twelve dollar ticket for the people instead of fifteen dollars, which I think we got that last year concession, and I think we can get it again this year. Uh, but I just put the the numbers up there. But it's all of these figures. If you put 2375 and 1875 up here at the bus and run it, that's what these numbers will come out to be. When you have $12 a person uh, and and uh, the biscuits at $750 a person. Okay. So I guess the debate right now is what do we set the fare at? That's what we're trying to decide. Is that correct? Right. And and the current is whether we set it at $100 or $120. Is that correct? I'd say $99 for marketing purposes. <laughs> well, being that our budget says on the income section that we were looking at $2,500, and we think we're going to get roughly 25 people, then we should set it at, you know, $100 or $99.99, whatever you want to call it. Just my two cents. 100 bucks. You're an engineer and not marketing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> No, I do get it. <laughs> so let's just, uh, without anything other than just a strike, just a quick consensus. Let's run around the table real quick. What's everybody's consensus on one hundred ninety nine dollars or um, one hundred and twenty? I say a hundred because I can give you five twenties and not expect any change back. I'd say 99. Jim, I'm going to put everybody on the spot. I'm going to go around I the whole see horn. you smirking, Jim. <laughs> One dollar. Um, no. I'm setting the prices right. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm fine with, with $100. I mean, that, that, that seems like a 
seems reasonable. I, I, I understand the marketing of 99, but I, I don't know. I, I, my, my question is whether, um, whether there's a break for uh, spouses. Break for what? Spouses, families, family members that attend. We have done it in the past where I think it was, what, 75 or 80 dollars for a member of the family. Okay. I was just curious. We'll do $99 and 75. <laughs> All right, Dan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run around the horn real quick. 100. Hey, family 100? discounts. I'll be Jim's brother. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know what it was last year. 99. Okay, I, I'm I'm fine with hundred. Scott, one hundred be fine. Perry, one hundred would be fine for me. All right. So Joe, we've got a consensus. I don't know that we've got a. I don't know that we have to do anything per se right now, but we've got a consensus of ninety nine dollars. Uh, for the fair, let's start actively promoting it. Let's get it in Sparks. Let's get it on uh on the net at least once a week. Uh, and start uh, we can sign up. Uh, we can create a Google form if we need to, so that we can get people to sign up. Or do you want to send have them send an email? Uh, or do you want to do that too a little too early? Say that again. I'm sorry. We have multiple ways that we can sign people up. We can give them a Google form like we do with the signal reports and they just put in their interest and say, contact me. Um, or do you want to use your email and collect that? But what I think we've got as a, a, a board right now is we've got a consensus um, that $99 is what we'll go with, but we really need to try to hit um, we really need to try to hit uh, upwards of right at 30 people instead of 25. Is 30, the 32 people we need to, to to break even. But uh, um, And it was $75 for the spouse or second person from the household last year. And I think that's a great thing. Yeah. Because this is a great perk, you know, if the, if the, uh, the family wants to go down, they could go down on the bus and they could Uber over to the Rocket Center and the ham could enjoy the ham and the family could enjoy the Rocket Center. Well, this is usually it's it's a, a lot of times a spouse will stay. I know, Jim, your wife stayed at the at the ham fest, didn't she? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She walked yeah. around and she she made purchases, too. That way they can track what we spend. <laughs> Make sure they get the equivalent in purses and shoes later on. I think she enjoyed uh, pointing out all the uh, YouTubers that uh, that she's yeah. seen seen me watching online. Yeah. Okay. I've got all a right. list from previous years that I'll send out initially. See what they have to say. So there's th so it would be that ninety nine dollars up until like august 1st okay and then it then you'll what, bump it up 20 bucks or 120 after that okay okay we have a consensus um uh, field day we can uh let's just don't forget about it um uh, joe are we going to do anything at the free fest table no you said no sales so sales, yeah. no all right no we'll revisit that. All right. Um, I am going to make sure that we're done in the next five minutes. Field day. Uh, let me I, shoot. I was at the uh, talk to Fred Miller and Jelly, and if they complete the construction at Germantown Municipal Center, it can be there. If not, they were talking about possibly having it at 1075 Mullen Station, which is outside of EMA. And MRC, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
I would hope that we'd be able to go back to where we where we kind of been expected to be at the Germantown Municipal Park, but we'll just kind of have to play that a little bit by ear. Okay. Uh, John, let's try to figure out how we can get a couple of extra programs running. I know we've talked about a couple of ideas. I'd like to try to figure out how to get uh, a fox hunt you've talked about running. I'd like to figure out how to get maybe uh, a kit build going or just something. Okay. Yeah, and then if anybody on that note, if anybody knows somebody that wants to be a PIO, we have an open position. We could certainly use some help. Uh, the folks All that right. I think would do good don't meet our minimum requirements as far as meeting attendance, but uh, I will definitely. There's some, there is, we could potentially as a, there, there are ways that we as a board could address that. We could suspend the rule for that. There's, there's opportunities if we find a right person and I think that there's a good, good fit for the position, let's discuss it. Let's not rule right. somebody out just because of that. That's Got my it. sentiment. Okay. Um, I have three minutes. I'm not going to go past two hours. I'm just not going to do it. So with that, I want to just take final words. Let's go around the horn real quick. Um, I don't have uh, anything really. Um, please send me your feedback on the meeting format. It's a work in progress. I'm trying to get to, uh, to a better format that works a little bit better for us. Uh, Vice President positions open. Perry, do you have anything? Nothing. Uh, Jim? Um, I think I've taken up enough time, but I, I do have um, some tickets here if anybody would like to deposit them for me. Uh, I'm not going to be able to attend. Um, I'm going to be on the available Saturday. So... If anybody wants. Uh, let me know. Let me know, Jim. I'll sync up. I'll put your tickets in and call them. I'll be there. I okay. have a, a slew of tickets in for myself. Okay. I, I can just drop them in the mail to somebody, you know, drop them in the mail to you and you can, if you're going Saturday. I, I, I will be there. I, I have my own stack of tickets oh. to put in, so I, I'll be glad to drop yours in. That okay. looks like a mighty thick envelope. Yeah, and I was, you've got a lot of tickets over there. Uh, that was you had to call you Tom Medlin. No, not quite. <laughs> uh, our immediate past president doesn't appear to be in the meeting at the time. Uh, director of programs, that would be John. I don't have anything else. Scott, you have been very, very quiet during the meeting. <laughs> I do the same as always. Fair enough. Do you need anything? Is there anything you need we can help you with? I'll probably spend some money. I'm looking like I'm under budget going in so far. I'll try to keep it under okay. five this year. Okay. Fair enough. You're uh, in budget is good. Um. Uh, Mike's checked out. He lets know what's going on. Try to get your sparks uh, to him by Saturday night, please. Uh, Joe, you got anything? Uh, no training right now. Uh, I guess the next one might be a tech class starting late June or July, but haven't formulated anything. All right, thank you. Uh, Dan? No. Got anything? Uh, nothing else. All right. Well, it is, uh, uh, we don't have any old business. Uh, we've talked about, I do want to talk about Ham Club online. Uh, we'll defer that. I do want to talk about our club logo at some point in time, but we'll defer that. Uh, announcements for everybody. Free Fest is this weekend, Saturday, April the 6th at the Bartlett Municipal Center. Field day, if you need it, is the 22nd, 23rd of June. Huntsville's coming up August 17th. We talked about the bus trip. And I would ask uh, and be grateful if you would ask one person that is not a member of our club to join our club. And with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Joe made a motion. Any seconds? I'll second that. Seconded by Jim. Uh, any, uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All opposed? No opposition. The motion to adjourn carries at approximately 831.
Thank you, everyone. I Thank apologize you. for running long. No, I worries. really, really wanted to try to get it done in 90 minutes, but didn't quite pull it off.